Welcome back to the hotspot, everybody. The show must go on as my guest now in the KUM News Zoom room is well, well aware. The very <laughs> lovely, the one and only Michelle Bloss unleashing the creativity and the expressionism, the ability to tap into those emotions that each and every one of us as human beings will all feel at some point in our lives. Michelle Hoffaday, welcome. I can I have been waiting to talk to you about the fact that you guys have your latest production is a podcast version of Shakespeare's The Tempest in Chamorro. Right. In Chamorro. What a the concept. First, the first of its kind ever in the world. So what's really amazing is um, you know, you know me and theater. <laughs> yep. And um, I love You are the stage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> um and I, I just thought, you know, how fun, how fun to, to like hear a Shakespeare play in tomorrow, because I don't know if most people know this, but um, Shakespeare plays have been translated into so many languages. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, really, what about tomorrow? So I did the research. I was just curious. And I'm like, nope, tomorrow's not on here. And I said, man, what a cool thing. And I contemplated this maybe like five years ago. Right. And I didn't think that it was a project that I would do myself mm -hmm. and so um you know later on i said well wh why not why can't i do it myself why not me right. why not me i mean because it's if it's if it's the passion that i have then who better to do it than than me so exactly and in, in your capable hands i think this would be like <laughs> the perfect the perfect way to actually get this on the wikipedia article of, yes there is a shakespearean work in in native tomorrow but tell me michelle how difficult was it to actually take all of those words in old English and, you know, and then kind of like transpose those over to, you know, was it? Tomorrow. Yeah. Cause a lot of people even believe there's, there's two, there's two types of tomorrow and you know this as well, as well as anybody, right? There's, there's like street tomorrow and then there's like, you know, academic tomorrow. And if you get the two confused, you know, you can kind of, you know, ruffle some feathers with some people in our community. Yeah. And you know, I just, for me, like what we do in theaters, we tell stories. We're storytellers. Yeah. And so I wasn't going to get caught up in the academic stuff. And for me, you know, I don't know if, if it's the same with you. I know, Jason, you're, you're tomorrow, too. Hmm. Can you speak your language fluently? Fluently, no. I mean, I, I, can, I, can, kind of, I can kind of grasp, like, what, what the idea is, but, like, you know, yeah. But maybe you listen a little bit. You can kind of catch some things here and there. Yeah. So it's the same. We're the, we're the same generation. We're the same peers. Uh, we're peers, and so we understand this. So... I mean, my use of the language wasn't great, but I had my parents, my aunts, my uncles, you know, I grew up listening to the language. And for me, I kind of wanted to preserve that because they were, get, you know, they're getting old and they're passing away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want a way to preserve how I know tomorrow in this way. So that's why I asked my mom to help me on this project. <laughs> what better resource? what better resource and yeah. you know and she's my mom and so <laughs> I, I i but there was a chance she could have said no but she didn't she's like she was kind of sighing like what shakespeare i don't i don't like i don't like shakespeare you know she she just had all this like <laughs> i guess you can kind of massage like shakespearean works into tomorrow you could say oh that's uh, uncle bill <laughs> i'm like i'm like mom don't worry trust me because remember these are like people they're characters and she's like, I'm like, I don't know what to expect, but just, you know, let's just, you know, can you help me, please? I promise, I promise, it won't interfere in mm -hmm. your in your uh, TV shows. <laughs> now, you know, Michelle, as, as many interviews as I've done with you over the years, which which have always been, you know, like the highlight of my day. So, like, I'm I'm so stoked for this, right? But I, I typically ask you, you know, why did you pick this particular work? Like, if it's a musical, if it's a comedy, if it's a Shakespearean work. It seems fairly evident why the Tempest would be perfectly fit to move into Chamorro because it's about people on an island, uh, right. one of whom is pretty much betrayed and um, mm -hmm. and you know like has has his own um, identity, I guess, taken away. So maybe maybe give us some uh, give us a refresher course, or maybe like like I hate to use this with an academic, but give us the uh, the Cliff Notes version of the Tempest, <laughs> like like a mini summary. So please, yeah. um, it's about this usurped Duke of Milan. Prospero, who uh, was basically his kingdom was taken away, and his treacherous brother was was the Greece. one that usurped the oh, kingdom, and just sort of dumped him on a boat with his daughter, who was just a baby, and said, "Okay, bye." Didn't really care. Oh my uh, God. He ends up and washes up on this deserted island, 
uh, which is inhabited by two indigenous beings, an airy, an, an airy spirit named Ariel and a servant monster named Caliban. Now, Prospero is a magical person. So, <laughs> a magical person. So, so yeah, he is enchanted. Hmm. He's a sorcerer. He studies magic. So he has this ability to manipulate the elements, I guess you could say. So he enlists, um, well, he colonizes. <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. Uh, the, you know, <laughs> no, and that, that's why I think it, it is absolutely a perfect fit. Yes. I mean, this is what's great about Shakespeare are the themes. It's like people people focus too much on the language and they forget, wait a minute, it's still English. You can you can understand it. Just listen to the story. Get that out of your head that you can't understand anything because you can't. And it's what it's really about are the themes. Um, so we have this familial relationship that's gone sour. Someone is betrayed. He lands on an island. He colonizes these these beings because he can. <laughs> And uses them and plans to take vengeance initially on his brother um, when their ship happens to be passing by. So he conjures up a tempest, and it's all it's all illusion. And they end up stranded on this island as well. But they're all fine. The ship is act actually is not damaged. And over the course of the play, uh, he intends he's thinking through what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And his whole goal was just because he has his daughter. He wants to go back. He wants to go back home, and he wants to make sure his daughter has a good life. So um, the daughter ends up falling in love <laughs> with the second male she's ever seen in her life because her father, well, the third male she's ever seen in her Which life. Which may or may not have happened in our island's history, too. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, ooh, who is this handsome Italian guy? <laughs> Spe uh, speaking of good-looking people, okay, wait, wait. Smile, smile, smile first, real quick, because this is for. It. All right, I had to put that on my view reel. <laughs> I realized I should have been looking at my camera, but I was looking at you instead. So. <laughs> no problem. No, it's it's. It, I mean, the 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 themes and and the characterizations and and just the overall like sentiment seem to fit. You know, not just the language of of Chamorro, but but also the story of of our people like so well i mean we can we can so easily identify with that because we're human and it's a story about humans and so we all go through similar things similar things no, you don't have to be a duke but if you understand betrayal if you understand love if you understand loss regret uh reconciliation all that then yeah you'll you'll get it it's, mm -hmm. it's ultimately considered a comedy so it's not like a tragic thing no one's gonna die um so it's still great fun to listen to and, and you hear a lot of sort of like Guamisms, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. uh, which is fun. And so uh, when when people hear, you know, when 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 I'm talking to the actors about it, and I'm like, yeah, you know, how would you react to this? You know, if you if you if you heard someone say this, what would you say initially, or what would you do? I said, put that all in there. You know, I I'm open to whatever. So it was great fun working with the actors because um, they're all from Guam. You know, they're all Chamorro and. Um, and and so doing this during pandemic times and everything's locked down everything was online and um the uh, the rehearsal the recording the editing was all done online and so this was really really a, an interesting experience and um but i'm glad that it all came together beautifully and there's a whole story there in that now movie. michelle you, you've done so much stagecraft right in in the traditional classic way doing this of over course. a podcast though you know you're 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 you as director and you said you're interacting with actors but you're doing it in purely a audio only format you know as someone who's been doing this as long as you have what challenges did that you know that environment present um the fact that we're not all together in real time and mm. no costumes no 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 <laughs> set <Yeah. laughs> that that kind of makes it a little simpler because you don't have to worry about those other things but what's great fun about live theater is that you're all together in real time and you're all going through this process together in real time mm -hmm. to do it in this way online um because every i had to you know everyone had different schedules so having to like guide the process individually <laughs> was interesting oh, okay and try you know getting okay try to imagine you know like because the other person's not there for them to work off of so i'd have to remember kind of how how to, how that person is and you know 
So you recorded everybody, was it per scene, like asynchronously? So not everybody was like in the same like Zoom call and you did it like one time shot, one pass through, and then what you had, you actually had to break everything up. Yeah. It's That's a lot crazy. Of it's crazy because, and then sometimes people would cancel or, you know, things, things come up. And so the process took a little longer than anticipated, but I mean, I guess six months isn't so bad <laughs> from beginning to end. If you're going to do it, do it right and take the time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And this is actually, this is not the first time um, the UOG Theater Company has done this. You've, you've also done uh, The Importance of Being Earnest by none other than Oscar Wilde. Also, not the easiest thing to undertake, but you guys pulled that <laughs> off beautifully. And, and also Macbeth. Mm -hmm. Yep. Macbeth, yes. The, the most, po possibly the most popular <laughs> Scottish legend since, you know, um, Sir William Wallace. Yes. And it's got witches. So what, how can you not like Shakespeare? You've got magic, yeah. witches. It's great. So is, is this is this an ongoing series, Michelle, that we can expect to see more of going forward? I think only because of because of the pandemic times and you know we were having to teach online. This was sort of my solve, so we could still do theater without having to physically be there because it was just wasn't allowed. <laughs> so now that things have essentially opened up and things are quote unquote back to normal, um, it's live theater is going to resume again. So. Oh, yeah. Fantastic, but no, you know now you've got three works. You know, um, yes, you're you're credited for this, and you've got this, you know, on your on your resume. So you certainly are are very very adept at handling this kind of format. So oh, thank you so much. Okay, for so um, obviously you can go to uog.edu and find the theater um, the theater department. You know, all the links are there. And again, because it's a it's a podcast, you can listen to it in the car. You can listen to it while you're cooking, while you're working out. Um, take it, you know, break it up into sections. You know, share with your friends and dissect. Um, there's infinite ways that you can consume this and all of them totally cool. And there's a, a link for a script of side to side in English and tomorrow. So that way you can follow along um, if you're listening to it and you want to uh, listen and see the words in English. Very nice. Because you and I know because we both went to Sanchez, I was that guy that I, you know, I, I almost went, you know, blind, like my eyes were always darting back to read the footnotes at the bottom because I couldn't understand what the heck Will was talking about. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Okay, Thank Michelle, you. Congr congratulations, you know, to you, like, I, and look, shift your head over real quick so we can just see that all the world's a stage. I love that. Sorry, this way. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is, man, that is, that is the mantra for all time. And so thank you again for sharing your time and your passion. You know, we really, thank we really, really, really appreciate it. And we're going to play a real quick clip from The Tempest, which again is UOG's podcast in Guam's native tongue in Chimoto. Thanks to our friend, Michelle Blas. Michelle, thank you as always. Thank you. Manango ho taigui inganga za hu malu mo gitsapso. U. Si kui le blu. Masia mo nango ho taigui inganga. Lu pusi shon mo kalan gonsu. Ha. Stefano. Ku kwa ha ta lu ni hasti. Ungan. Bu la ibarilis prim. So must 